Hello everyone, welcome to Data Bracket. In this demo, we are going to see how we can explode a JSON payload into a PySpark data frame. So, uh, as we can see here, we have two JSON payloads, both are nested JSONs, and we are going to convert them into PySpark data frames using PySpark uh, inbuilt functions. Uh, we are not going to use any Spark SQL or external libraries. We are going to explode this purely using PySpark functions, and we'll see how to do that. So for us to do that, we need to load the data into a Spark data frame. To do that, we need these payloads to be saved as files. So let's save these files into Databricks file system for now. So I'm going to write dbutils.filesystem.put and I want these files to be in temp folder um, and I'll call them sample1.json and I'll pass the sample one name and I'll make sure that overwrite is true so that I'll not keep appending the data over and over again and fill up the space so we can see the structure here we are putting the file or the payload so sample one is our variable which is holding our payload we are putting this variable payload into this file in the dbfs and every time we do this we will override the file the new data so let me run this and I have not run the previous command so I'm gonna run this this and this now let's put the file there and it says that it has wrote 485 bytes and it returned true let's do the same thing for sample 2 as well and Oh, the payload is not the same, it should be different, right? So we can see the byte difference now. So both the payloads are written as JSON files in our DBFS. If we want to see, we can see that. We'll attach the cluster and let's go to DBFS, come back, temp, and we have our, both of our files here, right? So that's one thing out of the picture. So what we are going to do is we are going to read these files as data frames. To do that, we can simply call sample one df equal to spark dot read dot json, and we have to pass the path. So to pass the path, let's see how we can query the path of this file from the dbutils. So we can write simply dbutils.fs.ls this is file system listing the files and we are going to pass the path where we have saved our file this is our path to the file and if I run this I'll get this array of resp response array so in this my first element is in file info and inside that I have my path so if I do if I try to slice zeroth element of this list, I'll get the path. And if I slice it again, I'll go to the inner element and it'll return me the path. So we can see the DBFS path has been returned. So let's save this to a variable first. So let's call it path one. And we'll do the same for path two as well. And let's run this and we have both the paths in our variables we can see that path one comma path two and we have sample one and sample two file paths so we can pass this path directly to our spark read utility and by just calling path one and we know that these files are of multi lines so we can pass the flag multi line to be true and this will load our data into the data frame and we have the data frame ready and we can see the data frame how it looks by just calling the display method on top of the data frame and this is how our data frame will look so let's try exploding the image column after that we'll go for thumbnail column so to do this all we have to do is just call the star all function on top of that we can do df uh, sample1df.select 
and we are going to select image and if we call dot all or star symbol it is going to explode that specific column and it will create different columns for different elements of that uh, dictionary inside the column so we'll have a different column for height and different column for url and different column for width if i do display here we should see three columns height url and width for this specific image column and if we do comma all and run this we should see all the columns along with these three columns so yeah we have height url width and we have id rest all is appended to the end of this data frame so we can do the same thing just by using the same select method and we can call thumbnail column to be exploded dot all and we want all the columns to be returned in the end so that we have all the data and we can drop the uh, duplicate columns which are image and thumbnail and if we do display on this we should see only the exploded columns and the singular level columns so yeah we have height for thumbnail url for thumbnail again width for thumbnail and height for image url for image and width for image uh, if we want we can do the explanatory thing like we can uh, explode the data frame one by one one element by other element and we can rename those uh, column names whatever we want but this is the simpler way and if you have different columns then you will be good with this method and uh, let's just see how to do for this uh, nested json as well sample using an inbuilt python function myspark function so let's load the data frame which is a sample 2 let's call this sample 2 and let's pass the second part to this and we have the data frame ready let's see how this looks and we have batters column toppings column and we have three other columns and donut so uh, here the tricky part is in the earlier section we saw this is a simple dictionary and we have elements inside the dictionaries but if we notice here we have the dictionary but there is an array type inside the dictionary so we need uh, extra work to do here so that we can explode this so let's see how we can do that so i'll call sample df dot select if i say batters dot all dot display this will explode the batters column and give us the exploded response what does it say please check the specified table structure exists oh this is supposed to be sample too and we have the batter column here which is a type of array and the value is of type array and this is again the type struct we can see what type this is if we want to know we can simply do schema dot data type i guess that is uh, data type is not mentioned on this all right my bad that should be type name and this should give us it's a struct the column type is of struct but the value inside the column is not struct it is of type array so if we see we can see that the square brackets inside here so to get rid of this like we have to explode this column now there is a function in pyspark sql utilities from pyspark sql dot functions import explode so this is a function that will explode the array so we can simply do select and let's import column also and let's do explode and the column name which is batter after we explode the batters we have just the batter singular 
uh, column and uh, using this we will explode the column and again we will select all the elements let's do the same for the previous selection also let's select all the elements after external like separating the co uh, column values and let's do display this should give us yeah so this is simply being named as column since we have not given any alias if we give alias uh, what can we name this okay wait let's do this way we need to uh, make it a column so that the pie spark will know that this is a column and we are trying to rename the column and let's call this batter explode it what just happened mm, we have exploded this and we got this value and we don't need batters anymore so let's drop batters first and see how this looks so we have batter uh, which again was exploded into column so we have exploded that column and let's not rename it here dot drop batter Okay, we have the columns and let's say if you want to rename the column okay let's try here yeah so this is exploded after the selection inside this after exploding we have renamed it this is the batter exploded one and we have dropped the batter and we if we want we can explode this as well so we can simply do dot select explode batter exploded comma we need everything again so if we call this so let's say parameters one required sorry however but excluded has a stock type okay we can't explode this we just have to call select and star since it is a dictionary type the explode only works on array type and we have id type and everything else and let's drop the where is it batter and batter exploded let's drop batter exploded as well yeah we have all the columns and the same applies to the topping as well i'm gonna do it quickly since it is an of array type we can simply call explode and we'll explode the column topping and we are gonna drop topping in the end and we'll get different values for this topping column oh we have not did select all after exploding the topping and this is the topping column after exploding and we can see we have 24 rows here which we used we initially had only one row after exploding the entire json into different rows and columns we have 24 different rows with different values and i think this was really useful for your use case and i have created a couple of uh, reusable functions for this use case those functions are uh, added in the blog post that I have updated in the description please to check that out and uh, uh, keep an eye on the newsletter that i'm going to send out on data and ai related content for more information thanks for sticking around till the end have a good day guys